All right, today we're heading to a job site to install a UDM Pro, two USW48 PoE, a couple G4 dome cameras, and two professional APs. The cabling was already done at the site, so all we're doing is putting up the devices. But first, let's say bye to my daughters. Okay, and now we're at the job site. I didn't do any of this cabling, it was by another company, but they did a pretty good job. So they have data 1801 all the way down to 92, and then we have a couple access points. We're only putting in two access points in this place and two different cameras, and we will be using two of these AP cables for our cameras as they're in the correct location and there's no reason to run new ones. So what we need to do, we need to get the UDM Pro in, our switches in, and then we need to patch them to the switches. The company did provide one foot patch cables, which we'll be using because this is a certified job by Comscope Cables. All right, we now have the CyberPower UPS put in and here is gonna go with the UDM Pro and we're gonna be using rack studs to mount the UDM Pro in the two switches. So I'm gonna get the other rack studs in and then we're gonna put in all our gear. Okay, we now have our access points hung and the cameras. What we need to do, we need to start patching them in, but we're using these one foot. These were given to us. I usually would have used six inch as these are a little long. Each desk has two data jacks and we're only gonna be using one. So we're just gonna skip every other data jack. And this is the finished rack. I'm not super happy with how it looks. We have these high density patch panels, which I wouldn't put in myself. I would have split them up into two different patch panels, but there's 48 jacks going across and we're using these one foot patch cables, which they supplied. I would have put in six inch. Uh, down here, we have our access points and two of the cameras. And then we have our DAC cables going back to the UDM Pro and then connecting in our switches. Now we have to get some IP phones brought up. did a signal strength test using the Ubiquiti Wi-Fi Man app. It didn't roam to the second access point, but even with the one, we could still see that we're getting great Wi-Fi coverage. I did a second signal strength test and it did roam and we were getting green pretty well everywhere. So that's going to be it for this on the site video. Like I said, I'm not super happy with how the rack looks. I would have done it a bit differently. Those patch panels, I really don't like the high density 48 port and being in one U. I have used them in the past. If you have a small rack, that's where they come in handy. 
but they're really difficult to work with if you ever need to service them. Also, like I mentioned, I would have put in six inch patch cables, but since we weren't supplying any of the material, we had to go with what they had. If we would have switched the patch cables out, it would have cost a few hundred dollars and that's overhead that the client doesn't need. For the phone network, I created a port profile with the native VLAN of our staff and then the voice VLAN of our voice network. This way the voice phones will get their own subnet and when you plug a computer into the back, the computer will get a different subnet and they are all blocked out by firewall rules. I do have a couple other on-site job videos coming up. One later in this week, we're going into a house. We're going to be setting up a rack, terminating all the cables, putting in patch panels, and then putting in our Ubiquiti gear with our six inch patch cables. The next job is this one seen right here, which is a pretty big mess. It's going to be a lot of cameras and redoing the whole rack. We'll be ripping out all of the gear and then re-terminating everything and putting up about 30 G4 domes in one PTZ camera. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.